So today I'm going to talk um, about the Golden State Warriors uh, in the National Basketball Association. But please, if you're not a basketball fan, don't leave. Because I'm just going to use them as a catalyst for the message and for what I really want to talk about. So if you are not a basketball fan or you don't know who the Warriors are, they have, when I'm recording this, they have just clinched um, the Western Conference Championship in the NBA. And so they're going to the finals, the NBA finals, which will start this next week. Um, I'm speaking to you on the weekend after they have clinched it. Uh, over in the East, the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat will play tomorrow night in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals, and the winner of that will win the Eastern Conference and then play the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals, again, starting next week. But I wanted to talk about the Warriors because I've been listening to various talking heads, former players, even current players, uh, over the course of the last week or so in what, talking about the Warriors and talking about how the system that they have, um, it's unique to them, and really, you, you can't you can't do much with it with other teams and other players. And I thought that is so sad that this is how people feel. People feel that the only reason why the Warriors are so good at this system, which I'll talk about in a minute, is just because of the players that they have. Well, yes, that is why they are really good at it. The players they have work really well in it because they've totally bought into it over the years. There is a culture that has been established in their program, their team, for the last eight or nine years since their head coach, Steve Kerr, took over. And actually, prior to him, Mark Jackson, who had been the coach, did a great job of creating, starting to create that culture and laying that foundation. And then Steve Kerr came in and took it to a whole new level. And so for the first five years of Steve Kerr's uh, coaching career and coaching them, they played in the NBA Finals. And then they were out of it for the last two years, uh, pandemic, injuries, a variety of things. Some would say, well, those are excuses. Okay. And they would say, yeah, we don't want to use it as an excuse. But now they're back. So six out of the last eight years, they played in the NBA Finals. That's amazing. And a lot of people will point to the system, the culture, the, the players, of course, as well. But these players have bought into what Steve Kerr and the culture, um, it, it, Steve Kerr and the culture he is trying to create. Well, one of the main tenets of that is when you watch them, it is a beautiful thing to watch. Okay, constant movement of players and ball. When it isn't that way, it looks like pretty much every other team in the NBA, and that's when they are having their issues. They'll, Steve Kerr will be mic'd up and you'll get to hear him um, in games a lot of times. And so they'll, they'll come back after a timeout and you'll get to hear some of the things he was saying. And time and time again, he's reiterating when they're doing well, how well they're moving and how well the ball is constantly moving. And when they're not doing well, he's saying, hey, we're, a lot, we're standing a lot and the ball's stopping a lot. We need to get it. So that's, that's just the way they play. But it, it boggles my mind that these um, pundits, talking heads, former players, et cetera, will say, yeah, it, you kind of only they really could do that. I totally disagree. Now think about if you're not a basketball person, think about your sports. And this is especially true in the team sports, of course, where there's multiple people on one team competing at the same time and competing against other multiple people on, an, on another team. Those teams that are into totally bought into the concept of each other, movement, right? and, um, and then the culture, they are going to have a far greater chance at success than those who aren't. But what has happened in the NBA and in too many levels of basketball, it has become a lot of one player dominating the ball and looking to attack or looking to shoot while four others stand around watching, waiting to see what he does or she does. And then often that ball gets passed to them and then they do that. And the others are standing as opposed to constant movement. When you watch the Golden State Warriors, it is a thing of beauty. It's what basketball really should look like according to most people. It's how the game had been played for so many years. 
until the proliferation of the outstanding individual ta individually talented players. So now all of a sudden, the outstanding individually talented players started to dominate the ball and started to be the one who gets to do the things with it and everybody plays off them. Oh, but the way the Warriors play with people moving and cutting and all these different angles and then people, you know, moving the ball constantly, it is a thing of beauty. And yet here's all these talking heads saying, yeah, the game really can't be played that way other than by players like the Warriors have. Well, I'll, I would agree with that only insofar as to say players like the Warriors have because those players have bought into this is how we, we do it and this is our system. Why can't other coaches create that same culture in their, in their place? Why can't any of us, in whatever sports we are coaching, create a culture that says, we are all about one another. We are all about sacrificing for the good of the team. This style of play requires a few things. One, sacrifice by the players. They have to give totally of themselves over to the good of the team. Doesn't mean they're not going to maximize their own individual skills and do what they do best. Absolutely they do. Steph Curry is the greatest shooter in the history of the game. Klay Thompson is darn close behind him. Draymond Green is the you know lunch pail bucket kind of guy. Does all the dirty work, everything they need. Jordan Poole, Andre, Andrew Wiggins, time over and over again, different players fit these mold, fit these roles and then maximize their individual strengths. You have to have that. But it's all in... Uh, conjunction and coordination with one another in striving to win, which is the one of the other things we hear constantly when people will say when they've interviewed them, all of the players to to a player will talk about, I just want to win. And so they've given over to them, themselves over to this experience that says, I just want to win. And our best way of winning is constant movement and, and all, which then leads to the next thing they have to have, great conditioning. Well, there's a sacrifice. You have to be in the best shape you could possibly be to play the way they do. They're constantly moving on offense. The ball's constantly moving. Then they got to turn around and run back and play great defense, which they do as well. And so there's this attitude. And then it all stems from the coach, Steve Kerr, who has done a remarkable job over his eight years of, of um, you know, leading this team. You know, five straight finals right from the start now they're back in it. So six of the last eight years, they've made it to the finals. But it's all about his attitude about this is a selfless game that we all give to our give to it, coaches included. And so when everyone in the team in the in the program, you know, buys into the culture of we, um, they their term is strength in numbers. Okay, when everyone buys into that, we have a much greater chance at having the kind of success that they are having and a much greater chance that everyone will give to each other. Well, why can't other coaches do that? Why can't other programs and, uh, and all sports do that? Well, of course they can. And yet I'm hearing from, you know, on these different talk show, radio, radio shows and TV shows, how, yeah, this is unique to, to the Warriors. It's unique to them right now. Yeah, because this is what they have fostered as a culture for the last eight, nine, 10, whatever it's been. Even before Steve Kerr, Mark Jackson did a lot of that, that same stuff before Kerr came in. And so there was kind of a foundation laid, but any of us can do that. Why couldn't any of us do that? Well, part of the, the problem, if you will, is that the game has changed in the trickling down into the college, then into the high school, then into the youth levels where it's become a lot of stand around, watch one player with the ball, look at the whole look at me attitude. And the players on this team, in this culture, in this program have said, that's not how we're going to play. They will at times play that way. And that's when they get in trouble. They're human beings. They're really good alpha, you know, alpha dog players. They're going to do, they're going to have their moments of, I can do this and I'll carry it. And they'll be able to do it at times and get on rolls. But when they're playing their best, it's all about us. It's all of us together. And so I think that all of us as coaches can foster this and work to create this kind of mentality and this kind of, of, of team culture that says, we're about one another. We're about doing the best we can with one another and for one another. 
And when we do create that and work to create that, good things are going to happen. So anyway, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on this. Scroll down, leave a comment down below, and, and you know, let us know. Do you think it's unique to just the Golden State Warriors? Or can teams of all, you know, certainly in basketball, but of all sports, can all teams do this if they have the right leadership and the right people on board saying, yeah, this is what we're going to do? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Scroll down, leave a comment. All right. And we'll talk to you again next time.